Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Arturia Pigments 4, and today's video is about this keyboard modulation source, which I don't think we use as much as we probably should, or maybe we're not really sure what we should put it on, right? So I have come with a couple examples and a couple of cool tricks that we can do with this modulation source. So let's go to a new preset, and basically, in a nutshell, if you're not familiar with what this does, it's basically giving us a different value as we move up and down the keyboard, right? So it's a modulation source that says if we play a lower note, we're going to have a lower value. If we play a higher note, we're going to have a higher value. So what can we do with this? So first of all, one of the coolest ones, let's go to a new preset again. Maybe the analog just makes something kind of simple, right? We have a saw wave. Let's bring this up here. Maybe a square wave. Drop this down an octave. It's a pretty simple recipe. So we have kind of something simple like that. And maybe give us some release. Soften it up a bit. Okay. It's nothing too crazy of a patch here, just kind of something listenable, I suppose. So we have this keyboard here, and if you ever notice when you're playing some piano or something like that, the lower notes are going to be a little bit more in the left speaker. The higher notes are going to be a little bit more in the right speaker, right? So if we want to simulate something like that, we just grab this here and drop this on the voice pan. Now, this isn't full modulation. As we can see here, it's at 0.25, but we can go pretty substantially higher. And when we play something, it kind of sounds a little bit more wide. Right, so it's kind of a pretty cool process there. So that's one of the aspects that you can do with this here. So we can double click this and remove this. So now you think, okay, we know what this does. What else can we put it on? And something that I've done for different types of string patches is kind of use this in conjunction with vibrato, right? So for example, let's say we go back to a new preset and let's say go to analog. And for this one, let's do a triangle, something kind of softer, right? So generally we want to do a vibrato. We grab our LFO, we drag it to the fine, maybe reduce the depth just a little bit. And then we go to our LFO, maybe change this to free running, for example. And then maybe make this rate because, you know, anywhere like five, six-ish or so, maybe low four. It's kind of an appropriate area to make vibrato. So if you're doing something maybe like strings, for example, and you have a violin really at the top end, the vibratos are generally going to be a little bit faster than the person like really trying to move with the cello and like moving their entire arm, right? I'm sure we've all seen that. It looks hilarious. But yeah, so the vibrato rates are going to be a little bit different for the most part because you can go a lot faster with, <clears throat> with, a, with a violin as you can with a cello. So keeping that in mind, how would we apply this keyboard to this parameter, right? So what we'd want to do is we want this keyboard to modulate the speed of this vibrato based upon the notes, and this is a perfect spot for that. So we'd grab our keyboard and we just drag and drop this onto our rate and maybe kind of like clean this up a little bit. So if we have a lower note, then a higher one. So that's a cool technique where you would put something like that on there. So something to think about as well. So, <clears throat> and it's not just restricted to the uh, speed of the vibrato or the voice pan. We can start doing something a little bit more creative, for example. So let's go back to a new preset and I guess <clears throat> analog, maybe do a saw wave. So if we went to our effects and then let's say for our first one, we could do a stereo pan, for example, right? And let's set this to our main tempo here at one over two. We go a little bit faster. Okay, so we're kind of moving things back and forth, left and right, automatically right through this module. Now what we can do is we can grab this keyboard and maybe bring this amount down just a little bit and then drag and drop this here and give it a good amount. So the lower notes aren't going to be as wide as the higher ones. Add some reverb to that, make it a little bit nicer. So there's something like that. And maybe what we could do as well, let's go back to our analog and then let's maybe, maybe get, let's keep with one saw wave. And what we can do is we can bring this detune down a little bit and kind of put these both on these voices and also on the, uh, the detune as well. So kind of a lower note would be like this and a higher note. Maybe add another saw wave in here.
So as you go higher up, it's going to be more voices and it's going to be more detuned, right? So that's how we're using these keys to kind of control things. So hopefully you're starting to kind of get the uh, the gears turning and seeing where we can apply this modulation parameter. So one of the last two examples we can show you here is, for example, let's go to, I guess, another saw wave. Let's soften this up a bit. So we go to our effects and we have these kind of reverbs already here. So we can give it an initial amount of reverb and then drag and drop this guy on here and kind of give it a good amount. So the higher notes... Gonna be a little bit more reverby and the lower ones really not much and also we can always high cut this as well to kind of prevent the low end from the reverb So yeah, that is the keyboard modulation in a nutshell. It's definitely really cool. There's a lot of times where you kind of think, man, I kind of wish something would change as I move different keys. And that's going to be a perfect example of that. So try to make some cool stuff with it, implement it in your patches. It's going to make things a little bit more expressive. I, I guess maybe expressive is not the right word, but maybe it is. I don't know, but definitely give it a try, give it a chance, give it a try and give it a chance and see where it takes you. So hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.